Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing one of my favorite videos, my seasonal stash video. So I'm just going to give you a quick flashback, FYI, blurb, review, mini review of all the new products that I used this summer. So if you want to see what I've been up to product wise, stay tuned. So usually I go by cleansers, conditioners, etc. But I'm trying something a little bit different this time. So I'm going to group it by brands this time and then go through cleanser, deep conditioner, conditioner, styler, and so on within each brand. So let's get right to it. I'm starting off with Baskin Bloom. So I do have a review on that coming soon. So I'm not going to give too much detail, but I'm going to do a quick blurb. Did I like it? Did I not like it? Maybe give you a peek at the ingredients and kind of keep it pushing. So, let's go. Signing off with this Baskin Bloom Gentle Herbal Cleanser. This is my new HG shampoo. So, yay for that. These are the ingredients. If you can see it. It has really good ingredients. It has Rasso Clay, which is very conditioning as well as cleansing. And of course, it has like peppermint and other great stuff as well. So peppermint helps stimulate growth and so on. So my hair was super clean and super soft and moisturized after using this. It felt like if I had conditioned my hair, but it definitely felt clean. So new winner, new HG, definitely will be purchased. Yay, yay, yay. And next. My next new try from Baskin Bloom is the Brahmi Root Hair Mask. These are the ingredients. So you just heard how I talked about the shampoo. Multiply that reaction by about 10 and you have this DC. This is another new HG. The shampoo was amazing, but the deep conditioner was amazing. -er. My hair was super soft and moisturized even after rinsing. After rinsing, my hair still has so much slip. You would have thought I still had a conditioner in there. If you look at my demo of me using these products, you'll see just how much slip and moisture and how amazing this was after using. So this is a definitely purchase for me as well. I love it, love it, love it, love it. New HG status HG. So I got two new HGs in one day, so that's good. So the whole line has a pretty mild, fresh scent. So it's not super fruity, it's not cakey or anything like that. I can just say it's kind of mild and kind of fresh. If you don't like super strong scents, this might be a good one to try. If you don't like sweet, fruity scents, this might be a good one to try as well. Next on Parade, we have the Ease Leave-In from Baskin Bloom. So unfortunately, this is where things went a little bit south for me. So I really loved the previous Ease Leave-In. This one was really nice, but it wasn't a super wow for me. So the moisture was there, but it wasn't as super defining, I guess, as some of my new favorite leave-ins. So it's a great leave-in, especially if you like really creamy, really moisturizing, really rich leave-ins. But I don't think I'll be repurchasing this one. Then we have the Silky Aloe Curl Pudding again from Baskin Bloom. That's why I decided to go by line because it would have been too weird going back and forth. So this one does say it has aloe vera gel first. But when I used it, it felt like if it was just oil or butter. Like, as you can see, it's really, really thick. Like, really thick. And... It was just kind of too thick for my hair. I felt like if it wasn't really penetrating. So I have one friend who loves it. So if you're not super ultra low porosity or maybe if you just have dry hair and you like butters and stuff, then definitely give this a try. It just wasn't for my hair. It was kind of buttery, almost waxy. So that wasn't really for me. I can give you a quick demo of that. So. You can see how thick, look how my hands can barely move, like it's so thick. And it was like, you see how kind of heavy and oily it is on my hands. The Brahmi mask is a pretty thick cream, like you can see it's not going anywhere. So it is a pretty thick cream. But somehow, my hair loved it. So even though it's pretty thick, my hair loved it. So. As you can see, I guess it penetrates pretty easily, so that's probably why it's thick, but it still penetrates really well. So even if you don't like thick um, deep conditioners, don't worry, because this spreads really well and penetrates really quickly. And it's amazing, amazing. Next, we have this more moisture cream. This one she said was like similar to the old East Leave-In, but I didn't find it similar at all. Now, I used this after a bad deep conditioner, so it was almost like if I use it right after shampooing and it just wasn't enough to get my hair to recover after shampooing. So this is good for recovering right after shampooing. I guess it is a conditioner, but conditioning supreme. But this, even though it says more moisture cream, just 
didn't have enough moisture to get me back. My hair didn't feel soft after I applied it. It just felt, still felt like my normal wiry rough texture. This is the texture of it. It is heavy. It is pretty heavy. Like a lot of her stuff, I guess. But, um... You can see this one isn't really going going in as fast as it needs to. It still went in, but even rubbing it on my skin, I can feel that it's kind of thick. And I mean, it does feel moisturizing on my skin, but it just feels kind of thick. So I actually put this on my skin, and it didn't dry sticky or tacky. So hello, winter skin cream. That's how I'm gonna finish this off as a winter skin cream. This does leave my skin feeling nice and glowed up. And last but not least is this Baskin Bloom Twirly Hair Gel. My hair felt really moisturized and soft and I had a really cute little curl pattern going with this. The curl pattern was similar to my conditioner only so it didn't necessarily clump or elongate. But my hair was super moisturized and shiny and everything and I really liked it. Did I like it enough to repurchase it? Maybe. I guess just depending on the sales and stuff, maybe if I need to buy one more thing to get to free shipping or something, I would buy it. So it's almost like a gel cream. It isn't that goopy stuff that you're kind of used to with like Camille Rose and stuff. It's more of a gel cream. So there isn't much tack to it. I guess there's a little bit, but there isn't much. It's more like a gel cream. It is a light gel. But it did give me, it did last a week, so it did give me a great, excellent soft hold as well as moisture and shine. So I definitely be open to repurchasing it and I had a really great, happy hair week. And I guess for me that's the final test that I have a good hair week or not. And my hair week was definitely there with that gel. Next we have another gel, the Caraveda High Definition Gel. This one was similar to the Baskin Bloom. My hands are running out of clean space. I feel like I'm using a lot of products in this demo for you guys. It was similar to the Baskin Bloom in terms of it being more like a cream gel. But, like, you know, not super tacky, not super, you know. But it did do a really good job of, like, I don't know, of defining my curls, I would say. So it didn't necessarily plump them or plump them extra. But the curls that were there, I could feel the gel kind of wrapping around them and separating them, I guess you would say. So... You know, it did do a really good job. My hair was elongated, moisturized, um, defined, and soft. So, pretty much everything I look for in a gel. So, this is also something I could see myself buying again. So, would I repurchase it? I would say yes. If the sale is there, if the price is right, I would repurchase this. I wouldn't repurchase it for full price, but I would repurchase it like... I think I got it on a sale that was like maybe 50% off or something. I would repurchase it at maybe 50-40% off. It has a light, slightly fruity scent, so I like that about it as well. So next we get into Sultanicals, which I also do have a fair amount of products from Sultanicals that I tried this summer. I tried a lot of deep conditioners and conditioners, but I did kind of try a few other like leave-ins and stuff as well. So let's get into it. So I tried the Sultanicals Fruit Spare Vitamin Hair Repair. So again, this is something that's fairly new and people were raving about it on Instagram. I don't even think I saw any negative reviews. These are the ingredients. I might be the first person to have a slightly negative review of it. It was fine. It just wasn't an instant penetrator for me. It was thick, uh, but thick in a, in a kind of nice whipped way, but somehow it just didn't instantly penetrate my hair. And I like my deep conditioners to instantly penetrate. So after I let it sit for like 25 minutes and I think I steamed my hair, my hair was super soft after that. But when I just put it on, I panicked. I wasn't sure if anything was going to happen. So it's a sitter for me with my ultra low porosity. So for that reason, I probably won't be purchased it because I just like things to move quickly and Afrotastic Kill Elastic does that. This is the... I'm not doing middle fingers at you. <laughs> this is the consistency. So it is... Thick in a sense, but it's also light. Um, let me see if I can show you. Let's see what this does. So you can see that it just isn't super penetrating. You have to kind of look at it. So for my low porosity hair, it was just not quite penetrating enough immediately. With heat and everything, it did do its job. But even then, the Baskin Bloom one kind of wild, wild me more, I would say. And I probably prefer that for Tastic or Elastic, so I don't think I would repurchase this. 
it is a nice deep conditioner in terms of ingredients. It didn't have as much humectants as I like in my deep conditioner. I could kind of tell in my hair. So even after it sat and my hair was super soft, it didn't feel as hydrated from the inside out as it does with like curl elastic and some other deep conditioners. I think it's great for most people. It's great for everybody else who tried it on Instagram that I know of. I'm the only person I know of that it wasn't a new HG super wow well, had to happen again for me. I really like to see some honey, some molasses, at least some fruit extract, some glycerin in my deep conditioner. And I don't really see those in this one. Next is the Sultanicals Winter Green Conditioning Supreme. And I use this as a leave-in. And I really enjoyed it as a leave-in. It was really softening, so my hair was super soft and moisturized. It wasn't the most defining ever, but my hair had bounced somehow. It was giving my hair bounce like rake and it was like boom, it was like ooh, okay. I use fancy conditioners as leave-ins, I don't use them as conditioners, so from a leave-in perspective it wasn't quite HG. I can see this being kind of HG or up there for rinse out conditioners if you're into pricey rinse out conditioners. But for me, rinse out conditioners is like trust me perfectly undone Giovanni if I'm feeling fancy. I don't really spend money on them just because I like to use a lot. But I definitely recommend this product if you like richer leave-ins or as a conditioner, it's great for those purposes. So next is the I Can't Believe It's Not Honey Hair Caramel. So I recently did a review on this, so you can check it out for like full details. But overall, it only gave half of the claims on here. So it was hydrating, but it wasn't softening for me. It definitely didn't add easy detangling because after rinsing, my hair was didn't really have much slip to it. It hydrated my hair as in water, but for me, moisture involves some emollients as well because my texture is kind of wiry and rough. I need a little bit of softening ingredient as well to kind of smooth my cuticle and soften my hair. So for me, it would be great to mix in with my regular deep conditioners to kind of improve them, but on its own as a deep conditioner, it wouldn't work for me. But if your hair is silky or if you don't need that extra softening, like your hair naturally feels soft to the touch, then you might be fine with this. If you don't need a lot of extra slip or something, you might be fine with this by itself. But I think if you took this and mix it with a conditioning supreme, you'd have the best deep conditioner in the world or something. So if I could see myself wasting that conditioning supreme, I would try to let you know. But somebody try it. Somebody in the congregation try it and let me know. But between how hydrating this is and how many humectants it has and how softening the conditioning supreme is, I think together it would be like a really super duper duo. It was also very drippy and very sticky. So I'm very messy. Just a drippy and sticky made it messy. So that's another reason why I'm not really inclined to try it again by itself. But I have another full one of this and I'm definitely going to be mixing it into conditioners to make those conditioners dream team worthy. So next I have another product from Sultanicals, the Frizz Wiz Curly Finding Leave-In. So this leave-in was everything. I loved it, loved it, loved it. It is my new HG leave-in. So it beat back to Sultanicals Slip and Slide Nut Proof Hair Glide. It just feels more moisturizing, more defining, and probably even smells better. Just I love the texture more and everything. So I have a lot of Slip and Slide Nut Proof Hair Glide to get through. And I still love it, but this one just ooh, made me excited. You know? So this is my new HG leave-in from Sultanicals. These are the ingredients. So it does have some defining ingredients in there. It does have some humectants in there with the beet sugar, the final ingredient being the cellulose gum. It has slippery and high up, so the slip is great. It's just a win-win, perfect, I love it. I love the scent, I love the texture, I love everything about it. It smells nice and sweet. Not cakey, but kind of fruity, I guess. And it has a really nice creamy kind of texture. Next from Sultanicals, the one that didn't really work for me. So this is the Sprung Coil Boosting Jelly and Ooh Child, Ooh Child. I wanted to love this but I couldn't love it. My hair was so dry, so frizzy, mm, it just didn't do anything for me at all. I can't even tell you where it went wrong. So of course Kabama dries my hair out so maybe that's where it went wrong. Just having the Kabama was enough to totally kill it. Yeah, I just don't see anything in here that is super moisturizing for me so I'm like looking for the humectant, not really seeing it. There just wasn't enough moisture and moisturizing ingredients in here for me. 
And it's supposed to be a coil boosting jelly, which is supposed to be for coils, so we need more moisture, boo. More moisture. She just didn't do anything to me. Didn't elongate, it didn't define, didn't moisturize. I don't even think I could say it had any hold to it. It was, it had a slight crunch, I guess. So this is the texture of it. It strikes me as slightly kind of angle, kind of running out of space. It feels like heavy, slightly heavy, so I'm rubbing it in and I can feel like a layer, like, you know. So it's not super heavy, I would still call it a light gel, but I can feel that it's a little bit heavier than the other gels that I demoed. And it leaves more of that kind of cabalmer sticky stickyish kind of feeling on your hand than the other gels that I demoed. The skin tells, it's good, it'll be good to be able to skin test everything before I put it on my hair, because I, I can usually tell from my skin a lot of the times, like, some problems that's going to happen with my hair. So last but not least, some Sultanicals, I have this Rappers Delight. So one of my friends says she loves it and she loves it even more than the hair sorrel. Now this is my friend who seems to be my hair opposite, by the way, so I really should stop listening to her. This is the same friend who likes the aloe with pudding and the afro repair, the spare. So I'm just stop listening to her. But anyway, so she recommended this to me, so I tried it out. I don't really hate it, it just doesn't really do anything for me. So it's neither here nor there. Um, you know a lot of people think that spritzes are just fancy water. I like spritzes that are not fa just fancy water. I like spritzes that hydrate and reduce frizz, moisturize, soften and stuff. And this, I can't really tell you what it does for me. So it's not horrible, but I'm not going to repurchase it. I really like the hair sorrel. The hair sorrel really moisturizes my hair. So that's the one I'm going to stick with from Sultanicals at least in terms of hairsprays. So next we're finally on to She Scented. So unfortunately I have to be starting with one I didn't really love. So this is the She Scented Coconut Quench Co-Wash. And this is the first product from She Scented that I didn't absolutely love. It still wasn't horrible but it wasn't great. It's fine if you just put it on your roots and rinse it out but it did leave my hair a little bit drier and frizzier than I'm used to from She Scented. So I'm definitely going to stick to the blueberry co-wash from them and unfortunately I won't repurchase it but it did cleanse, it did add some moisture but not enough so I'm going to use it out and then I'm not going to repurchase, I'm going to stick to my blueberry co-wash. This she sent the Sugar Peach Super Moist Conditioner, this is back to great, I love this. So I use it for a conditioner only wash and go. I don't think I have any pictures of it because I did it and I was in a rush and I didn't film it. But I was a happy camp when I used it. It was very moisturizing, it defined my curls, had great slip, and um, everything. It smelled great of course, you know, everything of hers smells kind of light and candy-ish. This is the texture, it's actually not dripping, so that's good, freshly scented. So if you're looking for a nice light moisturizing conditioner, I think this is probably my favorite. I want to say it's my hair conditioner from She Scented, although it's been a while since I used the others. But if you like the apple and the other She Scented conditioners and you haven't tried this, definitely give this a try. Back to the Coconut Quench line which I have some issues with. So this is the Coconut Quench Combing Cream. I used it as a leave-in. It was okay but it didn't really define my curls and everything else was just kind of okay. So I don't think I'd repurchase it but... It wasn't horrible, but if I'm using something when she said that I expect it to make me feel joyful and blissful and excited and happy and, you know, the bar is really high when I'm using she said that this was just okay. If you're curious, I like the cocoa cream leave in from she said I like the cranberry cocktail leave in from she said I like the papaya line conditioner from she said as a leave in. Those are some of the ones that I would like, I would use and repurchase, but this one isn't on that list. So, you know, it looks pretty similar to all her stuff, I guess. It's not super runny, it is pretty light, and it did give me good moisture. Next, I have this Moisture Mist, and I would say, like the Rapper's Delight, it just didn't do much for me. So I guess it's moisturizing and whatever, but it goes on pretty light. It just didn't add enough moisture and didn't do enough for me to repurchase it. It was more on the fancy water side of things than on the leave-in space that I love side of things. So that was it from She Sent It. I only have one new thing I tried from Camille Rose, I guess, so that's interesting. I mean, I still use Curl Maker and stuff this summer, but in terms of like all new items, this is the only new one I tried. 
the Moroccan pear conditioning custard. People did rave about it and I was just curious like it was like pretty much the only thing or one of the few things I haven't tried from this pink line. I haven't tried the nibs, the oil thing either but I'm not interested in that at all. But I have heard people rave about this conditioner a lot so I wanted to give it a try. I should have known, I mean I probably didn't know from the ingredients that it wasn't quite for me but being a PJ, being curious, they just kind of wore me down and it was on sale. I tagged it and I just decided to try it out. It goes water and then pear oil. It does have aloe vera juice lower down like after coconut oil and cherry oil and different things. But it doesn't quite have enough humectants for me and you know me, I need more humectants in my life than this. So I use it again as a conditioner only wash and go. And my hair did look nice when it was wet but it didn't really dry. Well, it dried kind of frizzy and my hair just didn't seem to have absorbed enough moisture from this product. So, not going to repurchase. It was nice as a conditioner, it just wasn't nice enough. It wasn't hydrating enough for me, for my ultra low porosity. My hair didn't feel soft and so on. I wouldn't even say it felt moisturized, but I guess it didn't penetrate enough to work for me because when my hair dried it was kind of frizzy. In terms of the texture, I guess you see in one cream by now, you see in them all, but this is the texture. And it smells almost like a ginger cleanse to me, which is interesting because I didn't, it didn't say ginger or anything, but it smelled kind of like that to me. And next I have this Mylo Organics um, White Peony Leave-In Conditioner. So I did like this leave-in because it was moisturizing. Now I, I don't use this as a leave-in, I just use it as a refreshing spritz. So it does add moisture to my hair. And it does control frizz, so I do like it for that. The only thing I don't like about it is that I don't like the scent. It has a really strong kind of cheap cologne scent that I'm not a fan of. Let me know if anybody else uses this and what do you think of the scent. For me, especially the original line, at least I only tried two things so far, but both of them, the scents are too strong for me. At least this isn't horrible in terms of the scent. It's cheap cologne, but it's not horrible cheap cologne. I didn't like the Vibrasso deep conditioner scent at all. That smelled like bug to me. So this is an improvement on that, but it's still too strong for me to enjoy. I still don't actually enjoy the scent. But in terms of moisture and definition and so on, this works really well. So I do recommend it, especially if you're not too concerned about scents. So that was it from kind of like the main natural hair brands. I have two little bonus products at the very end that I'm just going to run past you. So I have the Eco Styler Sport, which I tried recently, I did a review on. And I did enjoy using this. It did have good hold, much better hold than the Curls and Waves, because this actually would easily last me the week. It did have good moisture, I think this is the most moisturizing Eco Styler, so that's something. It has a fresh, a nice fresh scent, it smells almost like some kind of fresh laundry or meadow, you know those kind of laundry scents? Smells like that. It's a typical Eco Styler texture. Last, <laughs> but not least, I have this Yes to Carrots conditioner. So I picked this up at Target a while ago, um, and I was just waiting for the time to use it. So these slightly souped up drugstore conditioners, I wouldn't use to be tangled, but I would use if I needed to condition my hair midweek for some reason. I don't say co-wash because I never put it on my scalp, but sometimes midweek you need to reset your hair and you need to, you don't want to shampoo or cleanse, but you just want to condition. So I would use things like this and kind of fancier conditioners that I'm not using for a conditioner only. I would use them to condition my hair in those cases. So one of those cases finally came up and I was able to move this out and use it. I did enjoy it. It did give me moisture and slip. So as you can see, it is a pretty solid white. <laughs> But it is typical kind of conditioner. Even now I can feel a slip, so yay for that. And it did give me good moisture and everything. So I was a happy camper. It did what it needed to do in terms of just moisturizing my hair, conditioning it, adding some slip, and kind of resetting it. When I put this again, I would say yes. Not sure when, because I don't have these kind of cases very often. I might use this once every three months or something. So how does this compare to the Smoother Silk and Ultra Moist? I think the Giovanni Ultra Moist is probably still the best, but I haven't used it in a while, so I probably have to try it again and compare. But I do think it's probably better than the Giovanni Smoother Silk. But the Giovanni Smoother Silk will always be a staple for me, just because I can get it in the huge gallon size, so it's just economical, so plus it's great on my hair, so that's always gonna be a staple for me. It's moisturizing, good slip, maybe not as 
moisturizing as this, but I can get it in a huge size, so it's really economical. So I'm finally done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Chat with me down below about all the parts you saw, what you like, what you use, what you try, what you want to try, what you want more information on. Let's just talk products down below. And I hope this was informative and helpful and entertaining. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.